Today we're gonna take a normal photo, add a ghost to it, and make the whole scene very spooky. Hey there, my name is Ali. Today's edit is gonna be really simple but spooky. We'll start off by dragging our first photo here in Photoshop. This photo I'm gonna use the polygonal lasso tool and then I'm gonna just separate the background from this. Okay. How the lasso tool works is you make your selection, you hold shift, you press click, 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 shift is for adding. So you can add, click, click, you keep pressing click until you reach this point, which is before this is the last point. When you reach here, you just double click, it will automatically close. Then I'm going to hold shift and do this again and again. So I'm going to speed forward this part just to save your time. Okay, now we did our selection, I'm gonna add a layer mask, I got the opposite of what I wanted, so I'm gonna press Ctrl I, so now I got what I wanted, this one I didn't do it, so that when I'm done I'll just zoom in, I wanted to zoom in in order to be able to do this one easily, so I just ignored it until I finish the main selection out there, and then zoom in so I'm able to make it, okay now I hold shift and just do this one, just keep like pressing clicks, clicks, adding like points points I'm going here a little bit fast for the sake of the tutorial but you at home you can do this much slower for better and more accurate results okay and finally here this one is easy actually to cut because the model or the guy is far away from the camera and is small Make sure the feather is uh, zero. You don't want to do it with one like I did. And okay, if I made a mistake like that, after I finished the selection, I pressed a click by mistake. So first I'm going to press escape. So I get it back. Now I want to paint black. So make sure you're on black, then alt backspace. You paint it black. Okay, now we have our model here. I don't like the centralized edits. Like, it's not nice to have your model just exactly in the center. It's always better to have a third and two thirds. Like, if I press C, click, it's better to have your model here in the bottom third or on the top third. So, I'm just gonna move him down something just like that. A little bit down. Like, being in the center is not nice like in Photoshop and art perspective. Okay, now let's add the sky. I'm gonna add the sky. I'm gonna make it a bit larger so it fits the canvas. Then I wanna get rid of this like guy. So I'm just gonna first rasterize it. Then go to the clone stamp tool. Hold alt to stamp from here and just get rid of him. Let's put him behind. So now we have our model and we have the sky. Okay, we need to start doing some blends and some stuff. So I'm going to go to Curves Adjustment Layer, link it below, and then I'm just going to darken this sky a lot. So something like that. And let's pull this one even down. Now we have a very dark sky. Let's do the same for the model, Curves. Link it. Let's bring the highlights down, something like that. Okay, the thing I don't like, we, some, we have some rays of light here, which doesn't look nice. So I'm just going to stand on the layer, go to the burn tool, make sure I'm burning the highlights. Make it something like 50% and just burn the very bright parts here and there. They don't look realistic because we don't have that light from the sky it was from the sky before so i'm just gonna make this part down here much darker 
So now we don't have like before the very big difference between this and that, which looked a little bit odd. Okay, we have a problem here with the color. This color is more to the red or yellow. If you're facing difficulty finding what color it is this, just open the color and press click here. You see where this color is? It's somewhere between the red and the yellow, so it's orange. If you press click here, the sky is blue. This is orange. So we need to make them more towards each other. So I'm just gonna go to hue saturation. I'm gonna, this is the master. If I do that, it's gonna desaturate everything. Instead, I'm gonna go to the yellow and desaturate. Go to the red and desaturate. So now I just made the yellow and the red less colorful. You see the hue saturation? They only removed the red and yellow. So now I can add a color balance layer, link it below, and let's jump to the shadows. Shadows are the dark areas, and let's add some cyan. You see when I added cyan, it's too strong actually, like this is very strong. So I'm just gonna add a little bit negative five, something like that. Let's go to the highlights, add also some cyan, some blue. And let's see the three adjustments we made. You see it was not matching. I did three things. This is the things you need to do when trying to balance any two images together. First, you balance the brightness and darkness. This is dark, this is bright, so we balance brightness, darkness. Then we balance color. In order to balance color, first you need to desaturate, then add the color you want, and now it's balanced. Okay, let's add our this creepy ghost. Now I only want the black parts to be look, uh, to be there and the white parts to be invisible. So change it to multiply mode. Multiply will remove all the white and keep all the black. And let's put him below, behind like this. As you can see, we can see here some edges. In order to fix that, first I'm gonna rasterize it. Then I'm gonna go to curves adjustment layer. Make sure it's linked below. And let's try playing around. If I make it darker, it's gonna be more visible. And if I make it brighter, it's gonna be less invisible. So a little bit brightness just to get rid of this edge and some darkness here to make him look more visible. And if we still have some lines, just stand on the layer, add layer mask, take a brush, make sure it's a very soft brush with 100% opacity, make sure it's small and just erase the edge. Very simple, okay. We can also change his size. I want him to be big. Like, he should be scary in order for, like, something to be scary. It should be way bigger than the human being. So, I believe that's good. Okay. The only thing remaining is now the color. I think he's too, like, warm. The background is cold and he's warm. So, we need to add again, like we did to the model. Control, uh, the Sorry, the color balance. And let's jump to the shadows. Add some cyan. Some blue. Let's go to the highlights, add some blue. That's too much, a little bit of blue. A little bit of cyan. So now let's see the color balance. You see now he's more matching. We can also stand on him, we can layer his opacity. This will make him even blend even better with whatever is behind of him. So now we made our composition. It's time to like this is how I edit. This is the, the steps really important. When you blend things together, you try as much as possible to make them the same value, which is bright and dark and the same color. And after you're done with that, you stand on top of everything. And again, you add something to fix value. I always pull the blacks up and the shadows down. Not so much. And I take the bright points and make them even brighter, something like that. Now this is like the bright and dark, we're blending everything again together and then let's try to color things up, let's try the photo filter for example, let's try something cold, cooling filter and I guess I like the orange one, let's try the sepia, I like the sepia one, this is like we're adding a layer of color on top of everything so it blends things together. Let's go to a color balance, let's go to the shadows, let's add some cyan some blue let's go to the highlights let's add the opposite which is red and let's add some yellow maybe let's try green and magenta this is like based on your taste you're the one who will decide which colors to choose which color suits the environment but for example if we look at envir an environment like this 
This is supposed to be a scary edit. So in a scary edit, I'm not gonna make it like yellow and bright. It's not natural for a scary edit to be yellow and bright. Usually it's in a cold environment and in a dark environment. So that's why I stuck with these colors. And talking to you, I just noticed we have here some sort of a line. So let's stand on this layer. I don't know, this is not a line, actually not a sharp line, but we can, with a low opacity, just get rid of it. I don't want like to look like we have any sort of images blended together. The idea is to make it look natural. Okay, so now we added these three on top of everything, blending everything again together better. And now when I'm done, I'm just going to hold Control, Alt, Shift, then press E. This will merge everything into a new separate layer. So I can go to Filter, Camera, Row, Filter to edit everything together. Okay, let's try adding different colors. We can make it like blue, yellow. Let's leave it now as zero. I jump to the FX module. You can dehaze or haze your photo, like increasing fog or removing fog. I'm going to dehaze it to make it clearer. And I'm going to add vignette. Vignette is very important. It's just a black circle behind your photo. But when you do it in a low amount, it's important because it attracts the eyes to the center of the image. Okay, let's jump to the basic. The clarity is making things either clearer or more faded. In this photo, it's like a scary photo. Let's make it faded so that it looks like he's fading into the background. And let's make things a little bit brighter. I believe it's somehow dark. And okay. Then I'm going to jump again to it, filter, camera row filter. Now I want to target specific areas. I want to make, bring the eyes or the attraction to the middle. So I'm just going to use the oval and I'm just going to draw a circle in the middle. Make sure everything is zero first before you start. Zero, zero, zero. And now this circle in the middle, what effect I want to make in it? First, I want to make it more brighter, so I'm going to add some brightness in the center. I want the eyes to be attracted here somehow, so brightness will definitely make eyes attracted. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Eyes are going to be attracted here, so more brightness, more contrast, more clarity. Makes sense? And let's add another circle. On top of his face. His face is important. We need the eyes. Like this is how I imagine people looking at this photo. First they will look at the model. Then they will look at the object in the middle. This is how the eyes will work in the photo. Then they will discover the environment. And let's press OK. So now as you can see we made the eyes more attracted to this area. Another way to make eyes attracted even more to the middle areas. I'm going to draw here my circle. But then I'm not going to do like, I'm going to bring everything to zero and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow, a little bit of magenta and yellow. So by adding a different color, an opposite color of like, the whole environment is blue. So when you add the opposite of blue, it will attract the eyes to that area even more. Okay, let's jump to camera row filter. I'll do one more thing. The final thing is just a little bit of vignette. Again, just on, on like the background of the photo the, like the edges of the photo sorry okay and that's it for today's tutorial if you have any comments or questions make sure you put them in the link down below in the comment section sorry below and i will immediately reply thank you for watching this video and make sure you subscribe